How's it traders? Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. Today I want to start off the video by um, sharing the uh, S&P 500. Now if you remember in my last video, um, I called a buy trade on the S&P 500, which was on Friday, and that was at this point here. Right, so on that day I called a buy trade on the S&P 500, and it was based on the position of the VIX. Now if you haven't watched that video, uh, it's my previous video, I suggest you go and watch it. I'm going to link it up here. Right, so you guys can take a look at that and it's very informative and we can just see what has transpired from the S&P 500 right, um, since then. And I did give out a warning to any sellers that were taking part in this trend that if you are going to continue selling, right, at least reduce your risk because there is a reversal that's very probable and it has transpired. Anyway, with that out the way, uh, let's get straight into today's content. So this video is actually requested by um, one of... Um, my uh, members in my telegram group and um, Mr. Cupido asked um, about a video on supply and demand and now when people normally think about supply and demand they just think about the levels right but it's more than that and just like any other marketplace the forex market uh, is no different right and therefore we're going to go back to the basics of uh, supply and demand right and it's really as simple as this graph right in front of you where you have um, a price and quantity, right? And you have your demand and supply lines. And most of you should be uh, familiar with this graph. Uh, it's what uh, everyone learned in Economics 101. And it is basically the uh, core, right? Of uh, what's driving price in the background. Okay. Now, if we just have a look at this graph, we have a few things in front of us, right? We have our price, right? Which is this axis. Right, and then we have our quantity, right, which is the horizontal axis, right, and then we have our demand line, right, and we have our supply line. Now, what's happening here is just a basic um, understanding of what happens when price moves up and down, right, and what you'll notice is that when we get an increase in price, right, if we just look at where these dots connect, right, on our demand and supply line, right, what you'll notice. What you'll notice is that naturally with an increase in price, right, we get a reduction in demand, right? And as price increases, suppliers increase the quantity they are selling, right? And this is a natural law, right? And basically, it's natural for buyers to reduce their buying as price increases, Right, because everyone wants cheaper products, okay, and it's natural for suppliers to increase the amount that they are selling at higher prices because suppliers want to get the best price possible. So they are expecting or they are hoping to sell at higher prices. Inversely, the same is true, okay. So when price decreases, right, if we line up our areas here on the graph, what you'll notice is that. As price decreases, right, the quantity supplied is naturally less, right, and the quantity demanded is naturally more. And this is because at lower prices, right, there will be an increase in demand because people like cheap products. And at lower prices, naturally supplying will reduce because suppliers do not want to sell their products at cheaper prices. Okay, so this is natural. And we also have this area here right, where the demand and supply curve intercept, right, and basically what's happening here is this is the equilibrium price or what is deemed as fair value and this is an area where supply equals demand. Now it's important to note that supply and demand shifts, right, so if there is a shift in demand, okay, the curve, the demand curve will move to the right. Okay, so what you end up having is a line. Now, this line is curved. Mine is just going to be straight. Okay. The demand curve will shift to the right when there's an increase in demand. Okay. And and what this basically means is that if we just take a look at any price point, right, and we 
line it up on this axis, right, and we compare the previous demand, right, to the new drone demand, okay, we will see that what we'll notice is that at this price, whatever price this is, right, the amount demanded, right, at the previous demand curve, right, the quantity demanded was here, right, this could be any number, right, we can say for argument's sake, right, this is 3, right, and at the new demand curve, right, we can see that the quantity demanded has increased from 3 to a higher number, it could be 5, it could be anything, but the number is greater than 3, and we are at the same price. So when demand increases, right, there is an increase in quantity, right, at the same price, right, and the set is same for supply, right, when we get an increase in supply, okay, the curve shifts to the right, okay, and if we line up any price, right, any price point, okay, along this axis, what you'll notice is that when supply increases, okay, it doesn't matter which axis you line this up, right, if we just take a look at the supply, right, at any price point, the amount supplied increases. So previously, at this price, right, the supply was this amount, and at the new supply, which is at the same price point, okay, the quantity supplied increases, and the same is at this price point, right, it previously, the supply was here, right, the quantity was this amount, and at the new supply curve, the quantity has increased, right, and it's vice versa, when supply or demand decreases, these curves shift to the left, so if supply had to decrease, right, the supply curve will then shift to the left, right, and you'll notice that at any price point, right, we can see the quantity supplied is less than previous, okay, and the same is with the demand, right, when demand decreases, right, if you just line up these price points, right, any price point, okay, you'll notice that with the new demand curve, right, the quantity demanded is less, right, so when demand increases or decreases, right, this red line, right, this red curve shifts either to the right, that's if the demand increases, or it shifts to the left if it decreases. And the same with supply, when supply increases, right, the curve shifts to the, to the right, and when the supply decreases, the curve shifts to the left. Okay, now another thing we're going to be looking at, right, is this equilibrium, right? When demand increases, right, and supply stays the same, right, what we get is a shift in this equilibrium value, right? And this is what's going to be key to our lesson, okay, going forward, right? And if demand decreases, right, you can see the equilibrium shifts lower, okay? And the same is with the supply. When the supply increases, right, we can see the equilibrium shifting lower, right? And when the supply decreases, right, by whatever amount, we can see the equilibrium shifting higher. Okay. Now, how do we apply this to our trading, right? When we're looking at this equilibrium, this is basically going to be our starting point, okay? This equilibrium is simply a range, right? Whatever range that is, okay? Now, if we recall, right, equilibrium is an area where supply and demand meet, right? So it is an area where there is equal buyers and equal sellers, right? This is fair value, okay? And if you think about what's happening in the Forex market, when you get a range, this is an area where buyers and sellers also agree on a price, right? So this is an area where we have fair value, right? And therefore, this range or a range or a balance area is going to be equivalent to what an equilibrium is on the supply and demand curve. Now, when prices increase, right, along this curve, okay, we don't get a shift in this equilibrium, right? Price is just moving along this curve, right? So if we get an increase in price, right, that's not going to shift supply or demand, right? There are other factors that shift supply and demand, right? When we get an increase in price, what we get is reducing demand, right, and increasing supply, right, if we just have a look at this quantity, 
right? The quantity is basically the volume, okay? So when we get an increase in price, we get a reduction in demand. So as price is going higher, right, the demand is reducing as we're moving higher from equilibrium, right? The demand is reducing, okay? And the supply, as you can see, is increasing. So as we move higher along this curve, right, the supply is increasing, right? And that's because people buy less, right, as prices go higher and sellers, right, or producers or suppliers create more products or sell more as price goes higher, right? And this is what's happening, right, as price is increasing. So when we are on a chart, right, what we have is that price goes higher, right? The selling starts off small, right? And increases in size, right? As we go higher, right? Based on what's happening on the supply and demand curve. And in the same move, right? The buying starts off strong, Right? But as we go higher, the buying starts to reduce in size. Right? Because demand decreases as prices go higher. Right? And what we end up having in this situation, okay, is a situation whereby price will correct itself. Because at this point, we have no buyers, right? Or a small amount of buyers, right? So let's say these buyers are maybe five so there are five buyers and let's say at the same price point right whatever this price is on the euro us dollar or whatever asset you're trading right the supply at this price point is 20 for argument's sake right so we have five buyers and 20 sellers right now at this point okay if we match up these buyers and sellers right what we essentially get is a surplus right so only five buyers right and 20 sellers right that would mean only five items are sold and five items are bought right so this will leave a surplus of 15 right and at this point there is no more buying in the market right so what these suppliers are going to have to do is they're going to have to take prices lower right they're going to have to reduce the price of their product and this will hopefully attract buyers so that these orders can be filled or so that these products can be sold. So at this point, what you end up getting is a move lower, right? And as we move lower, right, the buying starts to increase, right? And the selling starts to decrease, okay? So at this point, this is what we would call a rejection in the marketplace, okay? Because price couldn't go any higher because of the lack of demand okay and the same is for the sell side right everything i've said just inverted to the sell side right we could actually just take a, a look at that right so when prices are moving lower right away from equilibrium as you can see when price moves lower right what we get is a decrease in the quantity supplied and an increase in the demand okay so what you'd get is that buying as price goes lower, right? Buying starts off small, and as we get lower, the buying increases, right? And during the same period, right, the selling starts off large and decreases as price goes lower. Right. And what we end up having, right, is a situation where we have scarcity, right, because there is a high demand, right, at these lower prices for whatever product it is, right, but the amount supplied, right, is little compared to the amount demanded, right. And what will end up happening is that these suppliers will end up increasing their price right in order to fulfill the high demand right and also to satisfy themselves because they don't want to sell everything 
right, at these lower prices because they also want to make a profit. It's more beneficial for them to actually sell at higher prices. So they'll increase the price of their product, right? And as they're increasing the price of their product, the demand decreases in quantity as well, right? This curve goes higher, right? We're moving along this demand curve, right? The demand, the quantity demand reduces, right? As we're moving back to equilibrium or to fair value, okay? And this is basically what's happening, right? When we get a rejection of the lows, right? And we move back to equilibrium or fair value. Now, <coughs> This is how price moves along the curve, right? But now what happens when supply and demand increase? Okay, now just starting here off with a clean chart, right? We know that um, our equilibrium price is a range, right? Or a 50% of that range, preferably, right? But generally it's the range, okay? And when we get an increase in supply, right, or we can start off by, um, because we're at the bottom of the range here, right, in fact, let me just um, use less space, right, so we can have more space. Okay, so when we are at the bottom of the range, right, this would be a lower price on the supply and demand curve, and at this point, we can see that we have scarcity, right, this is an area where supply is less than the amount demanded right and we know that this will correct itself by price moving back to the equilibrium okay right and that would be basically price going back to the 50. now when we get an increase in demand right so let me just remove that and price is now back at the 50 we are at equilibrium now when we get an increase in demand right what that basically means is that if we look at this example, right, we now have a new equilibrium price, right, and that equilibrium price is higher. And basically what that means is that the new fair value or the new two-way money, right, or the new range is actually higher, right. So this would be a situation whereby price creates a new range, right, above the previous range. Right, and that is a sign, and that is a sign of increasing demand. The opposite say, is said if we get a new range below the previous range, right, that's going to be an increase in supply. Now, when we see this, right, we know that there is new demand in the market and we have formed a new balance area, right, and from this point, right, because demand is increasing, right, suppliers. Are going to allow price to go higher because if there's demand for their product right why would they want to sell at the current price when they could possibly sell at a higher price right and they do not know if prices will go higher or not but as long as demand is in the market we can expect prices to go higher and find new demand right so when we see this demand shift we can automatically assume right that prices will inevitably go higher and possibly find new demand right so basically what it, what essentially is happening is that price is moving from balance to balance now i don't have space here so i'm just going to go to the left right so what essentially is happening is that price is searching for balance right so it's going to search for two way money okay where trade can take place Okay, and that's basically going to keep on happening until a point where we trade higher, right, and price rejects. Now, if you notice this new equilibrium, right, price is basically an increase in volume or quantity. Now, if you remember in my previous teachings, I did teach that when you get a range, this is basically volume because this is an area where we both have sellers and buyers, a lot of sellers and buyers at one price, as opposed to an impulse leg, right, it's more one-sided, right? So a range is what we call volume, right? And when we trade higher, right, and we get this rejection, right, this is a sign that there was no demand at higher prices, right? Remember, there is naturally always going to be sellers as price goes higher, right? So 
if their sellers while price goes higher right all we need for price to keep going up is for demand because these sellers right would want price to go higher so they can sell at a better price right so as price keeps on going higher we would expect a seller to come in or selling to come in right but what's not expected is buying right and when we see that buying because the sellers are already available at higher prices right when we see that buying coming in it's going to form a range okay now once we see that range forming okay basically that tells us that we have an increase in the demand right and if we have an increase in the demand suppliers or sellers are going to let price go higher okay and that's basically going to happen until a point where price goes higher we will naturally find sellers at higher prices wherever they come in right and price gives this rejection okay now this tells us that there is no demand at these higher prices because if there was demand price would have consolidated in that area all right and once we see this price is going to trade lower to look for buyers right because at this point we are here on the curve right and there's no demand right so price is going to trade lower to find this equilibrium right now this equilibrium previously was at this point right but that does not mean that the equilibrium will remain there right for equilibrium to remain in this area these buyers and sellers need to remain in place right now if these buyers and sellers are no longer in place price is going to trade lower until it finds a new equilibrium okay and once we see that right we can expect price to go lower still okay because if we find a new equilibrium that means we have supply right we have an increase in supply at lower prices right because if we go lower these buyers are naturally always going to be at lower prices right but what's not promised is these sellers okay so once we see the supply right at lower prices okay we will see that in the form of a range and we can expect price to go lower still right until a point where the supply runs out right and we basically get a rejection right so essentially this is what's taking place in the marketplace price is searching for balance okay to facilitate trade okay and this process goes on right and we know we are heading for a reversal right once we see that rejection right that lack of demand at higher prices okay and at this point it's still not enough to say that price has reversed or there is no more demand in the market because this could change at any point right and that's what makes the markets random is that no one knows where no one really knows when the order flow is going to come in for buying or selling right that's a random process based on the many market participants in the marketplace right their orders right are basically going to be reflected on price and that's going to form these structures right that we can then read and understand what's happening so this is not really enough to tell us it's the first clue right but what we'd want to see is price trading below the previous level and that lets us know that these buyers and sellers are gone right and when we find balance at lower prices right this then lets us know that we have supply in the marketplace because what we could inevitably have in this situation is that price just goes back to the bottom of the range and we stay ranging in this level Okay, so what we actually need to see is for a shift in supply and demand, we need to see either price breaking out and forming new balance above, right? And that would that would tell us that we have new demand or price breaking out and forming new balance below the previous balance area, right? And that would let us know that we have an increase in supply in the marketplace. Okay, so what we can also do, right, is that once we get these balance areas, right, or pullbacks or whatever you want to call them, two-way money, right so the same thing once we break out of these areas whether to the upside or to the downside right we can anticipate new balance forming at higher prices especially when we get a large breakout right that has significant follow through it would be pointless if price broke out right and broke back in okay or just breaks out by a small amount and you're expecting to find new balance right this is this is not a strong move and price may reject lower right so you really want to see a significant follow through right and from this point you can ex you can anticipate new balance forming in this area so we can anticipate price to range in this area right or form new demand in this area and we can actually use the previous level 
as a guide, right? So the previous level, right, will actually be our support level, right, where we can expect this new balance to range within, right? So from the previous high to the previous support, right, we can expect balance to form within that area. And we can also expect at this level, right, whoever bought in this demand area, right, we can expect them to buy again at this price level because if they bought it in this price level, right, when price comes back to this area, we can anticipate that demand to possibly be still there, right? It's not always the case, but as traders, that's what we are anticipating, right, going forward in time, right? And we can buy off these levels, right? And if we do get a response off these levels, we can then expect price to either range, right, within this level, and eventually at some point we are anticipating price to break out of that range, right, and trade higher, okay? And basically, that's basically how we're going to be using supply and demand, right, in the chart. And when we get these rejection points, right, so when we get these strong rejections off the high, right, there was something significant happening at that point as well, okay? So if we just draw that zone out in time as well, when price reaches back into that zone, right, we can expect a move lower right because whenever we get a high point and a low point right we are anticipating that this is the range which price is currently moving in right so we can anticipate that this will be fair value right and we can actually take a trade in that level right and expect a move right at least back to the mean of the range right so we can expect at least a response in these levels we can at least expect a move back to the mean of the range okay and possibly back down to the bottom of the range okay now this is basically the concept of supply and demand right and the theory behind it right and how we can think about it and uh, use it in the marketplace right so we can actually just go into the charts and see how this looks like okay now we are here on uh, gbp usd and we're just gonna use some examples <coughs> and explain this concept now I'm using this example because I actually took two trades, right, on um, GBPUSD. And the first one was this trade when we reached into this um, previous demand area, right? And I entered around this area and I took profit around this area. And the second trade was the rejection of this high, right? And I sold around this area, right? And I got taken out on a trailing stop around this area. Now, these two trades were both called in my Telegram group, if you want to have a look at that. They were called real-time before the fact and the timestamps are there, okay? So let's just take a look at these examples and um, try and apply uh, the supply and demand concepts, right, that we just uh, spoke about. Now, looking at this first area here, right, we had this move away from this previous balance area, right? Now, this balance area, if we first deal with the balance area, right? This is two-way money, right? So if we remember our supply and demand graph, so this is our supply and this is our demand, this is price and this is volume, right? Or quantity, right? So once we get this balance area, right, we know that there is demand at higher prices, right? Because we basically have a situation where we have sellers and buyers, right? At the same price so this is agreed upon price so this would this is what we would call equilibrium right so this would be our equilibrium price now when we break out of this balance area right we get an increase in price away from equilibrium okay and at that point right once we break out of that area we can anticipate a shift in demand right now this hasn't happened yet because price could simply trade lower right and build balance at lower prices right so at this point what we want to see is or what we are anticipating is for balance to occur in this area right above the previous balance area right so we would use this balance area right as our reference point and when price steps into that balance area we can expect demand to come in again okay right or increased buying to come in at this point right and when we get a rejection of that area right we are anticipating this shift in, in demand now if price 
rejects the area, right? So if you get a break out of the balance area, right, and you reject this area, we can anticipate a range forming above this area. At this point, we have a clear idea that demand has now shifted to the right, right? And people are buying at higher prices, okay? But if you get a simple situation where you just get a rejection, right, there's the possibility that price would take out this high and leave this balance area, right? Because we had sellers and we had buyers, right? So our equilibrium price would be the middle, okay? Right, at this point, we, when price breaks out, right, we leave this balance area behind, but we never got a range, right? So it's a bit more subtle, right? Uh, and it kind of goes unnoticed, right? And you will miss the move if you're waiting for the range. So the key idea is, right, is to anticipate a range forming, but expecting it also not to form, right? So if it doesn't form, that's fine, but if it forms, right, you have extra confirmation. Okay, so when price breaks out of the, out of this range at this point, right, we see in hindsight, okay, that there was demand, right, at this area, right, but we had no extra confirmation in the form of a full-on range or two-way money, right? That may occur sometimes and that may not occur in other situations, right? So what you'll be expecting, so what you'll be expecting is for buying, right, to resume once we enter into this range, Right, and you really get that confirmation once you get the rejection of this level. So from this point, we can anticipate price developing, right, in a range, but we also know that it doesn't have to. Okay, so we can expect the buying to occur in this area, right, and from that point, we can buy anticipating, right, higher prices, okay, at least until the previous high, right, and if we remember on our chart here if price moves higher right we know that demand decreases as price goes higher and supply increases so as this price is increasing in value right right so as this price is increasing what we are anticipating or what we can expect is that right the selling starts off small right and we can expect the selling to increase right and the buying right starts off a large and we can expect the buying to decrease as price goes higher right and when we are at the top of the range right we are now anticipating right that at this point the market may reverse right back to the bottom of the range right but it doesn't have to do that okay because if the buying actually increases right within these areas okay and the selling does not increase right so if the selling remains somewhat constant or reduces right at these highs right and the buying increases right around these areas then price will most likely break out right of the range okay and that's basically what happened in this area okay now when we are trading in real time we do not know if that's going to happen or not so the idea is to have a look at this move lower right and when the selling decreases as price moves lower right and the buying increases right as price goes lower right and we enter into this demand zone where we can expect buying to occur right we know that if we just take a look at our chart here, right, we have basically a situation where we have lower prices, right? And that would basically mean on our supply and demand graph, right, we have a situation where the supply is low and the demand is high, right? So there is scarcity, right? There is more buyers than sellers at this area. So we can expect price to move back to equilibrium, right? So at this point, we can expect that rejection right and price to move back to equilibrium right and potentially to the top of the range now when we're at the top of the range right we can expect a surplus and price to move back to the bottom of the range right but what we what we want to do is try and get involved in this in the direction of the trend right in the direction of the previous distribution because we know at the moment right there is demand right in the market right we haven't seen a situation where we have supply yet okay so at this point we are expecting the higher prices so we want to be going with the buy side, okay? And if we're gonna do that, we want to buy at the right points, right? And we want to buy when we have scarcity, right? Or when demand is greater than supply, right? And preferably within a level where we know we can anticipate the demand to come in. And this will show in the form of a rejection, right? 
So we get that rejection, right, at this point, right, and from there you could be looking for your entries to target the high and potentially higher prices. If price trades back to this previous high, there's a possibility that we could trade back, the possibility that we can trade back to the low of the range, right, and at this point, okay, we just repeat the process, right? Now, occasionally what can happen is that price can drop right through the range and at that point, right, you'd obviously lose the trade, okay? And if we build volume at lower prices, then we go with that. So essentially what you are doing is you're simply just going with the distribution, right? So when you get a distribution, right, and a breakout, you wait for a new distribution and you're trying to enter at the low of that distribution, right? Hoping that you get to at least the top of the range and possibly higher. This should be enough for you to enter a trade and move to break even, right? And anticipate that breakout to occur, okay? And we basically keep doing this, right? Until a situation where price reverses, right? And builds a distribution at lower prices. And at this point, we are now looking for lower prices, right? Now that does not mean that from this lower distribution, we can't break higher and build a new distribution higher, right? If that happens, right? Then we are now looking for longs once again, right? So we are basically following the distribution and we are using the previous distribution distributions as levels, right? To time and get a more precise entry in our trade. Now, coming back to the most recent trade, right? We can see that we broke above this distribution and we can see that we are finding buyers at higher prices, right? Now, off the law of this distribution, you could take buys anticipating price to reach the top of the range, right? But now what we get at this situation is that price breaks out of the range and we get that rejection, right? So we basically have a situation where we break out, okay? And at this point, we want to see if price finds demand, right, or not, and we get that rejection, okay? So, so at this point, right, we know that there is no demand at higher prices and we can anticipate a move back to the bottom of the range and possibly lower, Right, and if price finds supply, we will see a range forming at lower prices, right? And that's exactly what we get here. Now, this is not a full on range, right? It's just a simple pullback and a move to the bottom, right? And we could, it could still develop more or not, right? No one really knows, okay? But the idea that this is as simple as a range gets, where you get a buyer and you get a seller around the same band of price and they agree on that price, right? And currently, price has broken out. And notice that this is forming below the previous distribution, right? So at this point, we can anticipate lower prices, right? Until a point where we see that price trades higher and starts to build a distribution at higher prices above the previous range, okay? And basically, that's what happens and forms the ebbs and flows in the marketplace, okay? And forms the structures that we see, right? That basically is what forms the higher highs and higher low structures Right, these are areas where there was demand, right? And once we break a market structure and pull back, right, these are basically now also areas where we have new supply, right? And if we get a situation where we break out of the range, right, at this point, we're going to be anticipating higher prices or anticipating a new range for forming, right? And that will give us an idea that there's demand in the marketplace. Right, so that's um, the idea behind supply and demand, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a very lengthy topic and I try to congest it as much as possible, right? And I hope this helps, right? Mr. Cupido, if you're watching this, I hope this helps you, right? And until the next video, cheers.